at the at the end of the man candy animation clip we saw a bunch of uh, sperm characters that were swimming towards an egg and there were two different kinds of sperm a simple one and a more complex one in orange now these characters are rigged using the same building blocks that are used for man candy but it's a totally different type of rigging than is used for these bipedal characters and thus it's interesting to see the approaches I took to rigging these uh, two different things because um, this kind of shot might come up um, even if it's not for the same exact thing and it would be nice to have a good way of setting it up so you can animate it in a controlled way especially since you have a lot of characters in a shot instead of a few. The first sperm I'll look at is the simple white colored sperm cell that is seen swimming in a big mass towards the egg. Now some of the background ones are just a particle system but the more interesting foreground characters are indeed rig characters that are animated separately and let's have a look here in the library file to see how that works. The top the top sperm cell that you see here is uh, not the linked character but it's using the same uh, method of deformation and uh, the bottom one has that further enhanced with another layer of control to vary the animations in a scene. So let's look at how that works for the top one and then see how that's enhanced for the bottom one. If I hit Alt-A here, you'll see that this top one uh, has a wave motion that is much bigger in amplitude for the tail instead of the head, as opposed to the head. The head moves just a little bit up and down, and the tail really wiggles quite a lot. And let's see how that's done. Now, if I were to place a wave modifier directly on this, on this uh, character, it would actually have a wave that was identical front to back. Now if you click on the mesh here you can see that we have a bunch of modifiers. The first is a mirror and a subsurf. The mirror is because this character is modeled as one symmetrical half and the other half is simply created by the modifier. And the subsurf allows the character to look smooth when rendered and is mostly turned off in the viewport to uh, speed things up a bit, especially when there are lots of these in a single shot. Now beyond that are two lattice modifiers and I'll turn these off for a minute like so and like so and so now nothing happens and let's apply a wave modifier and see how that affects the character. Well the wave modifier is working and it's causing the character to have a wave effect but you see that the amplitude is the same for the tip and the bottom. Now the modifier has many um, many options for instance I can make the time start negative so that it can be already waving when it when it starts animating and I can change the speed of the effect. Uh, let's turn it up a little bit So it can be faster or slower. And I can change the height of the wave. I can change the width of the wave. And I can change the width of the narrow part between the waves. And so we can get something like this. Now that looks okay, except the head is really bobbing up and down like mad, and I'd like it to be not moving so much. So how do we do that in the nice way that resulted? Well, first of all, what I did was I created this lattice and I applied that wave modifier to the lattice instead of to the sperm cell itself. And then we applied that modifier to the mesh. Well, the effect is pretty much the same as you'd expect from just applying the wave modifier to the mesh, but now we can do things to the lattice to modify how the wave effect works. So what I did to the lattice is I added the second lattice here that is squeezed down in the front relative to the top. And I added that modifier to the wavy lattice so it squeezes down 
the front part of the lattice after it's had the wave effect on it. And that not only makes the lattice itself thinner, but because it happens later in the modifier stack, actually changes the amplitude of the wave, as we see there. Now the result of that is that the sperm's head becomes squished vertically due to that lattice, and I wanted to keep its shape preserved. So after that, so before I apply this modifier, I added another one to the mesh directly that uses another lattice that is simply scaled up on this end to deform the head and make it bigger than the tail. And I'll show the effect of that by itself, like so. And it basically counteracts the shrinking that happens due to the second modifier. And so that's how we have the basic waving sperm.